Hiya Squishers! And today we're going to talk about something a little bit more personal. Ooh, well not that kind of personal. Goodness me, what kind of an under the stairs channel do you think I am? I was talking more along the lines of stuff that makes you want to craft. Well, what am I talking about? Well, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about making craft your best friend. Seriously, you might have loads of friends. You might have one or two, you might have tons, but there is always room for the kind of friend that craft can bring for you. <clears throat> now, why am I saying it's personal? Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the journey I've had with craft and where it fits in my life and why it might help you. Might do, might do. Now, I don't often talk about it, probably because I'm trying to not talk about it or think about it as much as possible. And that is chronic pain. Yeah, I sure want, I'm sure if you've had it yeah, or you have it, you know, you know. So basically, chronic pain is wonderful. It's wonderful at consuming all of your thoughts and everything else and gobbling up your life with it. All of it just gobbles it up. Right, you need to, you need to find something for yourself. Now, when I started my, my, my journey, <clears throat> I was after a car accident. I got smooshed. But I was ever so grateful that my hands and my arms and everything else still work. And I'm saying this because at the time I wasn't quite sure if it was going to. So before this, I had a jewellery as a craft. I crafted. I couldn't imagine my life without craft. And I couldn't imagine my life without jewellery. It's all I did. Jewellery, jewellery, jewellery. But as the weeks and months spent by, I didn't get well I couldn't <clears throat> couldn't make anything I couldn't sit down that's a start I couldn't sit down to make jewelry <gasps> I did try a lot I did try to sit down a lot but it just wasn't working out and I couldn't really stand up doing blow torching it didn't really work so well so I found this and what this brought me <clears throat> was the ability to feel useful and like I was doing something even though I'd only just started learning how to knit I was doing something because I was mostly confined to a wheelchair or a chair. That's it. And it was kind of like, where do I go from here? So I've had to make really good friends with my craft over the years. And I have made special allowances for it. <clears throat> and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Have you got room for a new best friend? It's the kind of friend that gives you unconditional love. It doesn't judge you. Doesn't matter what time of the day it is, it's not going to shout at you because you're late and it's not got a birthday to miss. And also, if you don't pick it up for a year, like those lovely projects we like to put on hold, it's not going to give you any stick for it. And those kind of crafts, the kind of crafts that you can pick up and feel meaningful doing, just feel meaningful because you have meaning. You have a meaning and you don't have to know what that is, but sometimes it's just nice to be able to feel like there is progress. So if you have not found a craft that has really resonated with you, I would suggest fibre crafts are quite fun for lots of reasons. One of the reasons I love <clears throat> knitting in particular is that I found it was very portable. Now, when, you're, when you have any levels of chronic pain, uh, you don't really know how it's going to go. And some days are just a no-go and there is no knitting happening and you've got to be okay with that too. And have lots of different types of projects, like lots of different friends. Like, I bet you have different friends for different things. Think of your yarn projects just like that, or your craft projects. Different projects for different things when you need different levels of energy. And I would suggest if you can design your life like that, that would be amazing. I largely, like I'm a one woman show here. And I make sure I don't ask too much of myself here when I'm knitting because I've got to put it all my energy into all the other stuff. So knowing that you don't have to have a ton of energy to do something small and simple is really important. And knitting and crafting in general, anything that you can do where you've got a tiny bit and sometimes that's all you really need is a tiny bit of control over something and whether that's what colours you choose, what you knit, who you knit for, what you make, when you make it. And making sure that you don't feel like you're forcing a rock up a hill. And I'm sure you'll know what I mean. I'm sure you've had those times where you've been making things and it doesn't quite fit you, your circumstances, the kind of time you've got to give. It's kind of like the friend you need to give the heave-ho to, but you just don't know how to do it. 
find something for you that just helps you not think about it because that's largely what I do this is largely what I've been doing <clears throat> it's a very good distraction and sometimes I have to like I have different projects where my shoulders just decide that they just don't like me they go no it's like they packed up for business and I'm not allowed to knit I don't like that so I, I use my mind and I do thinking and I write stuff down so don't feel like if you can't do one craft at the time that you're just off limits for anything else there are times where your hands might not work so well. I know if my mum at the moment, her arthritis and her hands are really playing, playing goblins with her. She's not having a good time and she's not knitting right now. So sometimes it's, it's just not the right time and you've got to be okay knowing that it might come back and it will come back. So I'm always optimistic that any form of distraction or something that you can take with you constantly, and that is another great thing about knitting and crochet you can port it's portable you can stick it in your bag you can take it anywhere i knit outside school i knit in the car so it's something that you can always add to so that's my thought for a friday is <clears throat> there's lots of reasons why people make stuff there's loads of reasons why i make stuff and the journey of my chronic pain is pretty much where my yarn journey started so it's kind of a it's kind of it's kind of one big one big thing but I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's, it's been a joy to do. It's been really nice to not have the pressure to be, I don't know, anything. Like I was saying the other day, there's no, I don't, there's no rush. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. And I just really love everything about my craft that doesn't judge me, loves me anyway. And doesn't matter what time I pick it up, day or night, it's always there for me. So go and find yourself a craft friend, like a craft that's your best friend and work on it, make time for it and think about it. If you can't see it, just think about it. It'll work wonders in your life. It really will. And until next week, I shall see you then. Bye bye.